So we are now talking about SSE KMS. And so this is when key management service from AWS is managing the key. So very similar to SSE S3, but there is um, a lot more going on with KMS to provide you a, a greater level of security to meet regulatory compliance. So you first need to create a KMS managed key. You then choose that KMS key to encrypt your object. KMS is going to automatically rotate that key. So you still uh, have great automation there. Uh, you have policy controls, so who can decrypt using the key. Um, KMS is really good for meeting regulatory compliance. It's for FIPS, uh, the FIPS protocol for uh, storing um, uh, keys. That's the, the protocol that really matters here. KMS keys have their own additional cost. It's usually around a dollar. That's what it's always been, at least in US or Canadian uh, currencies there. AWS KMS must be in the same region as the bucket. Um, because it doesn't uh, go across regions for whatever reason, that's just how it works. To upload with KMS, you need to have the KMS generate data key. To download with KMS, you need to have the KMS, a KMS decrypt IM permission. So what would it look like to use it using AWS CLI? Well, here's an example. You're gonna choose AWS uh, cool and KMS. The idea is you probably generated that key and that key will have an ID, you'll provide it. And that's how it's going to uh, upload there. Um, if you want to utilize it with uh, for AWS S3, which is similar to S3 API, but more streamlined, it's going to be very similar, but the flag is a little bit different. Uh, but that's just for uploading. I do want to point out that uh, just as S SSE S3 benefits from having a bucket key, so does SSC KMS. And we'll talk about bucket keys soon enough uh, so we know what that performance benefit is, okay?